You're looking at live pictures here. It's the USS Intrepid in New York City. NBC and MSNBC are joining forces in a new mission called Hiring Our Heroes. It's an effort that culminates with a jobs fair aboard the USS Intrepid today. More than 1,500 veterans and military families are expected to attend. And it's an initiative that Congress has taken notice of. And Congress, there are multiple bills that are in the works to either directly fund veterans' employment programs or encourage businesses to step up. Two of the men working on behalf of some of those bills, Republican Arkansas Congressman Tim Griffin, member of the House Armed Services Committee, who served in Iraq with the 101st Airborne, and New Jersey Democratic Congressman Bill Preskrell, who also served in the Army and the Army Reserve. Gentlemen, Welcome to both of you. Congressman Pascal, let me start with you, your Veteran Job Corps idea. Why are you making the case for this? What makes well, this think, the best way to go? I think it's important that there be a wide universe for these veterans. The DOD has not done a good job in training veterans for possible job openings. We need to do a better job. We're catching to it right now. And what we want to do, there are a lot of jobs that can be done out there in terms of our forests, our walkways, our uh, national parks. This is perfect when someone comes out of the service to be qualified for, have the opportunity to serve in and serve their country. We need to do a lot more to get these folks to these jobs that will be opening, and I think that this is a good plan. There's a billion dollars that have been set aside in both the president's budget and the Democratic right. budget. I think it's important. I think it's money that will be well spent because what we've done is not prepared many of these folks to go into service, and then when they come out, there's nothing there for them, whether they're homeless, whether without right. a job. And health care, Chuck, is a big part of this as well, and I hope you ask some questions about that. Congressman Griffin, you, you are uh, sort of not in favor, fully in favor, I think, of this Job Corps program, but in favor of some of the things that the, the Veterans Corps would do. Explain. Sure. Well, I, I've got my own bill, and what it does is it says, hey, not everyone gets a traditional education uh, through, through the GI Bill. Uh, some folks want to do things a little differently. For example, uh, I had a constituent say to me, a lot of veterans, when they come back from overseas, they want to start a franchise. They want to start a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks or a McDonald's, et cetera. And what he told me is there's a lot of schooling associated with some of those franchise programs, months and months in many instances, and they can't use the GI Bill for that sort of education. So what I've introduced uh, is a bill that says, look, we need to be more expansive and flexible in terms of understanding what education for a veteran is. So my bill would allow veterans to use their GI Bill to fund some of that franchise education. Right. We have 66,000 uh, veteran-owned franchises in this country that, that uh, employ uh, about 800,000 people. Hey, I want to get, uh, Congressman Skrull, especially you, I want to get you to react to something that was on our air yesterday, and it had to do with some concerns veterans themselves have when they are entering the job market. Listen to Dave Smith. He's an Iraq veteran. He's part of this storming of the hill uh, lobbying team that was there yesterday. Listen to what he said about things he didn't do in order to protect himself in the job market. I think that a large part of the problem was translating military skills to civilian terms. Um, to be able to take things and say, you know, I was an infantry team leader, or I did this, or I did this, and to be able to put it on a resume so that people who have never been there can understand uh, was a little bit difficult. In addition, um, you know, I suffered pretty severe PTSD, um, and I was very reluctant to get the help that I needed mm -hmm. because I feared that, you know, getting help for that sort of thing or having it on my record may limit my employment prospects in the future. All right, it's that last part, Congressman Pratt-Skrull. I know you've been working on this. He was afraid to get treatment on PTSD. That yes, sort of struck me in order because he thought it was going to hurt him in the job market. Well, yes. What's the answer on this? This is very true with many of our veterans. Uh, there is a situation where you don't want to come forward because remember, many of the concussed uh, veterans who were uh, near a, a, a roadside bomb that went off or their vehicles turned over, 
Uh, there's no blood, there's no contusion many times, but there is damage to the brain, there is a concussion, and they don't want to admit that because they feel that then they're not going to stay on duty. You've seen this in a situation with the uh, soldier in Afghanistan, uh, allegedly who killed 16, 17 people there, innocent people. Uh, we are allowing too many veterans to fall through the cracks, Chuck. This is serious. Before you can get to a job, before you can get to an opportunity for a job, you need to be within yourself. This is a family operation. It's an expensive operation. We're not doing yeah. enough to find out who needs this kind of help. And Congressman Griffin, I mean, what, what do you do about this specific issue? Veterans in, uh, on the employer side, making sure employers basically don't hold this against veterans. Well, first of all, we need to do a, a better job of, of reaching out and educating the way you're doing uh, this week. Uh, but also, uh, back to the other point, we have a, a, a first-class veterans, uh, veterans Administration Hospital in Little Rock, and this is an issue that they are grappling with uh, when when soldiers, uh, service members come through, uh, they want to make sure that they get the treatment that they need, but a lot of times in the short time frame they interact with them, they're unable to, uh, to get a full uh, diagnosis. Uh, but we've got to continue to help. And the, one of the big problems that I've seen in, in Arkansas, and I think this is in a lot of states, there are so many resources available, but they're not organized in a way where a veteran coming back will just know where to go for mm -hmm. which particular for for a particular service and so we're organizing around a new entity called our vets ar vets uh, in arkansas and the goal is going to be to put all of the different services whether they be nonprofit, uh, right. government what have you under in one listing and try to make it easier for vets to know the folks that are out there to help them with the resume skills or help them get the mental health they need. All right, um, All right. I got to leave it there. Congressman Griffin, Congressman Pascrell, uh, the, we've been trying to showcase this week the bipartisan efforts going on. It's clear both of you are, are uh, big members of that. Thank you both. And uh, Congressman Thank Pascrell, you. I know you wanted to talk about health care. I'll have you back for that, I promise. Hiring Thank our you. heroes continues tomorrow. Thank you both. Tomorrow on The Daily Rundown, we're going to talk to Senator Jack Reed. He's a former Army Ranger, and he's one of just eight senators in U.S. history to graduate from West Point.